Today I'm going to show you the best food to cook on a bush barbie. Well I'm back and uh, for those of you who watch me regularly anyway I'm back. Um, I've been away for a couple of months really but I've been here the whole time. Uh, there's been some uh, circumstances outside my control so uh, that being my wife has finally uh, started up her own business she's a singer songwriter and she's now promoting herself online and and getting into that and at the same time she got quite sick so she managed to do both and um, I ended up with a lot of housework and seven children to look after so Yes, I do have seven children um, with my wife, so uh, we're pretty busy, and it got even more busy for me, so things like this took a bit of a hit, so I'm back into it now, and you can expect to see a few more videos come your way. So, I'm, uh, today yeah, I'm going out the bush and um, just going to do a bit of a cook of some lamb, and just show you how I do it in the best way. I like to um, do my meat and um, anyway it's uh, kind of unique to I guess our part of the world so you might be interested if you're not from here. So I'll see you at the end of the episode and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, now we have our little grill. This, this has come out of an oven, so it's a stainless steel grill. And not bad for a little job like this. Like that. Could even actually put it a bit closer. Doesn't matter if that's touching the dirt, because I haven't got a lot of meat to cook. Now, this is the meat that I've got from the sheep that I butchered on another episode, so feel free to go and watch that. So this is just some chops and uh, sort of meaty little off cuts that was part of the process of butchering. And um, just going to cook myself some lunch. These are usually sort of wasted bits of meat. Probably they'd go for the mincer. They'd sell them as minced meat in the supermarket. But they taste great if you're willing to just put up with a little bit of fat and uh, smaller pieces. So I'll do enough for two. Um, this lamb that I've got here was uh, probably probably about 10 months 10 months old and it was a very good sized lamb and a very good condition and got my classic trench fire and got a heap of coals down the bottom and I'll just feed little sticks in uh, to give it a bit more heat and a bit of smoke too, that'll help flavour the meat. This is probably 
one of my favorite ways to do chops. And so these are all gum leaves, eucalyptus leaves, and that's gonna be the flavor that uh, permeates the meat, so it's gonna taste great. Right, one side's done, I'm just going to turn them over and see how they're going. It's, um, yep, so blood's come to the top, and yeah, when that happens, turn them over at that point. So it's looking pretty nice. Doing the job perfectly, this little fire and that grill. Of course, I'm a big believer in trench fires. So just, they just tunnel that, or funnel that heat up to your meal, no matter how deep or far away that those coals are from the meat. It's irrelevant because it's, the heat goes straight up and uh, out the trench, but if the meat's flat against, or very close to the ground like that, the ground level, then it cops the heat on the way past. So, no better way to do it, I reckon. Well, I'm getting to the stage where these thin bits are done, so I just need to slow it, slow them down, and put the thicker bits in the middle and make sure they get done. So I put them on the these skinny bits on the area where they're not going to get burnt, and keep these fatter bits or curly bits because they're. See how that, that's done down there, that bit but up, up here, it's raw. So it's got to keep playing with it until I can get the, the raw bits done. But the fire is so steady, it's not burning anything. Really the only thing that could happen is that you dry your meat out too much. And it's still edible, but it's not as nice. So I just got to keep an eye on it, make sure I don't do that, and then... Um, once I've got them all up to the same level, I'll have myself a meal. Well, most of it's done. Probably a couple of little thick pieces, but I'll start eating it uh, while that's going, so... I'll bring him across to this bit of very clean wood here and um, cool him down a bit and uh, figure out how to eat it. I didn't bring a fork and a knife and a plate with me, so I'm going to use a pair of tongs and a little green stick that I've whittled and see how I go. But I don't think you could come across better looking meat than this. How well done that is. Beautiful, sort of crackly sort of stuff. Excellent. It's, um, this is actually a delicacy. It's saltbush lamb. I've had these sheep running on almond saltbush, which is a a bush native to Australia, and it's um, got a lot of salt in the leaves, so it flavours the meat. And uh, yeah, this is quite expensive if you buy it from a shop, or you could have it for free, <laughs> like I've done today. Um, so. Yeah, four days ago this was walking around the paddock and now I'm hoeing into it. 
and it's fantastic. Mmm, beautiful. But, then again, lamb chops are my favourite food, so I'm a little bit biased. But once if you're not if you didn't grow up with lamb, once you get used to the flavour, you just yeah, nothing else is better. All right, I better use me me stick that I made because uh, just to prove that I'm a real man. Tender as anything, and very eucalyptusy, smoke flavoured, well smoked. Mmm, a bit of fat. Contrary to what people say, fat is actually good for you. Just don't have too much. But. Fantastic. That's so tender. Yeah, mate. Also, meat's not actually that good for you to have it on its own. So, got to keep your guts moving with the carrot. So, a little bit of salad with your meat is good stuff. Not a bad carrot too, but I didn't grow that one. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next episode. And for now, I've got myself a mandarin to eat. Okay, catch you later. <laughs>